In this video, I'll cover the Envelope tool. Envelopes are used to reshape objects, such as a curve, a group of curves, artistic or paragraph text, or bitmap images, either by dragging the nodes that surround the object or by fitting the object to an existing curve. Because envelopes are applied non-destructively, they can be edited or removed, and the original object is preserved. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, You'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The Envelope tool is part of the Effects tool group. This set of tools can be found toward the lower end of the toolbox and can be opened by clicking the small arrow in the lower right corner of whatever icon is displayed. The Envelope icon is the third one from the bottom. There is also an Envelope Docker or Envelope Inspector on the Mac, which can be opened by choosing Window, Dockers, Effects, Envelope. On the PC, the shortcut to open this Docker is Control F7, and on the Mac, it's Shift Control E. The options here are the same ones that appear on the property bar when creating or editing an envelope. I'll start with the simple artistic text object. The envelope tool is active, and I'll select the object. In the property bar, there are four envelope modes, and I'll start with straight line mode. In this mode, corner nodes can be dragged both horizontally and vertically, and middle nodes can be dragged either horizontally or vertically. For all envelope modes, pressing shift while dragging moves opposite nodes in opposite directions, and pressing control while dragging moves opposite nodes in the same direction. Single arc mode works in a similar way. Dragging middle nodes produces arcs in one direction, and corner nodes produce arcs in either direction. Dragging nodes in double arc mode produces S-curves, in which the tangency at either end stays the same. In all three of these modes, I can't adjust curve tangency at any node, but I can do this in unconstrained mode, which creates a free-form envelope. Unconstrained nodes can be used to reshape the envelope in ways that can't be done in the other modes. I can drag nodes anywhere, drag arrows to adjust tangency, select a corner node and change it to a smooth node, select a smooth node and change it to a cusp node that can have different tangency on either side, double click to add nodes, double click a node to remove it, or marquee select a group of nodes to change them all at once, or move them all at once. For more detailed editing in a particular spot, I can marquee select nodes, and use add nodes to add intermediate nodes between all selected nodes, or I can select nodes I don't need, and delete them all. If I want to start over, or remove the envelope, I can click clear envelope. A simple application for the Envelope tool is to place an object in perspective. This banner shape and artistic text are a grouped object, and with the group selected with the Pick tool, I'll click Envelope, use Straight Line Mode, and drag corner nodes to match the side of the box. Another common application is to fit artistic text to a shape. With the text selected, I'll activate the Envelope tool, and there are several presets I can use, such as Circular or Push Down. The Envelope Docker has even more choices, including Banner or Heart. To fit the text to the cloud shape, I'll click Create Envelope From and click the Cloud Curve. The Envelope Mapping Mode affects how the object fits to the envelope shape. Original maps object corners, then maps other nodes linearly. Putty maps object corners only, and horizontal and vertical stretch the object to the shape's basic dimensions, then compress in either direction to fit. Vertical works best in this example. To bring the shape into the cloud, I'll press the spacebar to temporarily switch to the pick tool, hold the shift key and select the cloud as well, and press P to center both objects in the page. I'll select and delete the original cloud curve, and the envelope is still applied. I've now added some paragraph text in a rectangular frame, and with this text selected, I'll activate the Envelope tool. To copy the cloud envelope, I'll click Copy Envelope Properties, click the artistic text, 
and its cloud-shaped envelope is applied. Designers often need to provide their clients with mock-ups of branded items, and using the envelope tool helps make these mock-ups look more realistic. In this example, I'll use the envelope tool to fit the logo to match the perspective of the image. With the logo selected with the pick tool, I'll move it approximately where it should go on the front of the mug and drag a corner node to make it fit a bit better. I'll activate the envelope tool, and because I'm working with a basically rectangular object, I can simplify the envelope shape by double clicking to delete the middle nodes. Now I can drag corner nodes into place and click nodes to adjust the tangency of the envelope shape. Finally, envelopes can also be used on bitmap images. In this example, I have a closed curve drawn with the pen tool and an imported bitmap image. With the envelope tool, I can fit the bitmap to the curve and the flag now appears to be waving in the wind. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the envelope tool in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.